Good morning and welcome back to North Dartmoor as we begin our Palm Sunday worship 2021 here at Throwley St Mary's, a beautiful church here on the northern slopes of the moor which has offered sanctuary and hospitality and healing for many, many generations. And welcome wherever and whenever you join us in the beautiful name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Humble Lord, while people clamoured for a warrior king, the young donkey revealed your true servanthood. As you face the way of tears, the tearing of the temple veil, take us from the baying mob to place our faith in you. Jesus Christ, our victim and our saviour, our beginning and our end. Amen. We have our first hymn, Make Way, Make Way. Well, no matter how many people were cheering Jesus as he entered Jerusalem that day, or how many palm leaves were ripped off the trees and thrown on the ground before him, the truth is, is that many people found it difficult to understand what he was really trying to show us. Show us a power stronger than anything in the world, but a power that comes in a very different form to Caesar and his legions, the occupying force of that land of that time, of Pilate as he would have marched or ridden into Jerusalem on a strong, fine horse, determined to keep the natives in their place, for it was often a fractious time there. No, many of us find it difficult, even though we're drawn to it instinctively, 
to follow the way Jesus shows us, the way of a love that suffers, a love that gives itself no matter what the cost. And I'm no different to you. So join me as we pray this prayer by John Harvey, seeking God's Spirit to give us that courage and perseverance as we travel with Jesus this way of suffering love, of being light in this world, a world that we all love. Loving God, at this time, we remember that going up to Jerusalem cost Jesus his very life. So we come before you, conscious of the way religious words and holy phrases can slip so easily from our hardened hearts. Forgive us for the shallowness of our faith and the timidity of our following. Forgive us for the ready excuses we make for going our own way and claiming it as yours. Turn us round again, we pray, by your Holy Spirit active within us and among us. Show us how to be open again to your faithfulness and your freedom, that we may live new lives and be again bearers of the seeds of the kingdom of Jesus. Amen. We have our first reading. This reading is taken from Psalm 118 and is subtitled A Song of Victory. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures for ever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures for ever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When they were nearing Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany on Mount Olives, he sent two of the disciples with the instructions. Go to the village across from you. As you enter, you'll find a colt tethered, one that has never yet been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Say, the master needs him and will return him right away. They went and found a colt tied to a door at the street corner and untied it. Some of those standing there said, What are you doing untying that colt? The disciples replied exactly as Jesus had instructed them, and the people let them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus, spread their coats on it, and he mounted. The people gave him a wonderful welcome some throwing their coats on the street, others spreading out rushes they had cut in the fields. Running ahead and following after, they were calling out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Blessed the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. He entered Jerusalem, then entered the temple. He looked around, taking it all in. But by now it was late, so he went back to Bethany with the Twelve. The Donkey by G.K. Chesterton When fishes flew, and forests walked, and figs grew on the thorn, 
Some moment when the moon was blood, then surely I was born. With monstrous head and sickening cry, and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody on all four-footed things. The tattered outlaw of the earth, of ancient crooked will, starve, scourge, deride me, I am dumb. I keep my secret still. Fools, for I also had my hour, one far fierce hour and sweet. There was a shout about my ears, and palms before my feet. The old man dozed quietly on his favourite seat by the city gate. The gentle warmth of spring and the subdued murmuring of the trail of pilgrims wending their way into the holy city had set him dreaming, dreaming the dream of every Jew. It was a dream of freedom for his people in their land, the freedom for hallowed tradition and ancient custom with every parent free to teach his child the faith of the fathers. It was the dream for which the old man, like thousands of his countrymen, prayed every day. But in his heart of hearts, he knew that it was only the fond dreaming of old age. He saw a conqueror, triumphant, astride a white charger robed in majesty, before whom the mountains and the hills broke forth into singing, and all the trees of the field clapped their hands. A victorious Messiah who trampled his enemies like grapes, their lifeblood flowing like red wine, one to whom the nations of the Gentiles bowed in awe, while the faithful of Israel in triumphant vindication danced for joy on the holy mountain of Zion. The shouts, however, no longer seemed to come just from within the dream, but from without. And the old man crossed the fragile frontier into consciousness to hear real cries of Hosanna and to blink a little at a knot of pilgrims throwing their cloaks on the ground and spreading branches on the road. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. He rubbed his eyes. It was hard to see what all the fuss was about, but as they drew closer, he could make out the centre of attention. And he was rather disappointed. It was a man, but a man having neither the glamour of youth nor the venerability of age. The sort of man who would need to be pointed out in a crowd or betrayed with a sign. He found himself all the more intrigued. For all his disdain at the vulgarity of popular acclaim, he couldn't help wondering about the lonely figure in the crowd. He hoped that the man hadn't entrusted himself to their enthusiasm, for the enthusiasm of the moment was very different to the costly commitment to a cause. They were calling him king, but the king demanded obedience, not excitement. He wondered quite what the quiet figure on the donkey was trying to say. On a donkey? He hadn't noticed that before. Not on foot like a pilgrim, not the stallion of a conqueror or the camel of a desert prince. On a donkey, an ass, a colt, the foal of an ass. Where had he heard that before? He struggled with the familiar ring, the childhood memories of ancient scripture taught long ago. He reached for the scroll at his side, and there it was in the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Some king, he thought, hardly what the rabbis had foretold. He read on. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. The crowd was now being swollen by some of the earlier arrivals from Galilee, pilgrims coming out of the city to join the throng. And as the old man began to understand what this traveller was saying, 
His heart went out to the courage of the solitary rider. They'll crush him, he thought. Already there were the rumours, the scheming of a frightened establishment, the hasty consultations in the ecclesiastical corridors of power. With this man seriously taking on the might of church and state, priest and soldier, Jerusalem and Rome, they'll crush him. And what's more, they'll crush him in the name of the Lord. You wait and see. He knew of old the ways of the Sanhedrin. He could see it now, the temple guard picking him up quietly at a discreet spot, probably at night, a quick trial, and he'll be dead before the day is through. He shuddered with a sense of revulsion. But even he, shrewd observer that he was, couldn't understand why. Why this defiant gesture, this challenge already doomed, the claim to kingship, to be the Messiah? Why the carefully arranged plan, the deliberate ride to Jerusalem, the donkey, the acclaim, the timing of the Passover? Was there yet more? He looked again at the scroll. A king, triumphant and victorious, humble, riding on a donkey. He was well schooled in the conventional Jewish teaching, the two strands in prophetic scripture, one of the triumphant, all-powerful Messiah, the other of the despised and rejected servant of the Lord, bearing our griefs and carrying our sorrows. And he knew the current expectation of the two messiahs, the triumphant son of David and the atoning son of Joseph. But this man seemed to stand for both. He was both reigning monarch and humble victim. His throne was not in gold, but on a donkey. His authority not in might, but in humility. He read on in the scroll. He shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The old man suddenly felt ashamed of his dream. Here was no violent conqueror but a prince of peace mounted on a symbol of peace. No easy cry for him of peace, peace where there is no peace. Instead, he was preparing to pay in himself the supreme price for peace. With this journey to Jerusalem, the final act of obedience. To command peace to the nations, his dominion from sea to sea. A king then, not just for the chosen race, but for all, Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. Not the narrow nationalism of the dream, but the universal offer to all of a new way, a new authority, a new king. The old man could scarcely restrain a hosanna. For the first time in his life, here was the possibility of something, of someone he could believe in. A king worthy to be followed. A king worthy even to be cheered, he thought, as he rather sheepishly moved towards the crowd. For were he to stay silent, to fail to join in the hosanna of the universe, he felt that the very stones would cry out instead.
Almighty God, as we approach and journey together through Holy Week, from the joyful entry into Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday, through the Last Supper Jesus had with his friends, to the anguish of the cross, may we understand the depth of the love that sent Jesus into the world to be our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, help us to see and know your love for us, that in humility, love and joy we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We think of Christ, our servant King, as in the words of Saint Ignatius, Holy God, teach us to be generous. Teach us to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of Christ at prayer while his disciples slept. Holy God, we recognise that sometimes we put off prayer and thanksgiving as we give way to our human frailty, being too tired or weak or too lost. We thank you for all those who lead us in services of worship and prayer, both in our churches and online over the past year. When we can't find the right words, or any words at all, we remember that none are needed. All we need to pray are open hearts to bring before you our troubles, worries, joy and thanksgiving. And we remember that your Holy Spirit is there always, ready to hear and understand, even when we do not. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for all who stand in need and those who work alongside them. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are vulnerable, sick or at risk in any way. The past year has taught all of us the importance of seeing faces, having hugs and sharing times together. So we pray now especially for everyone around the world who is struggling with isolation, without the essentials they need, or the care, fellowship and love of friends and family. We pray for those close to home, those we may, we may know personally in our own community who are struggling with meeting everyday needs, such as debts and being able to stay in their homes. May their prayers and our prayers be answered, and may they know your love through the actions of others and the comfort of your presence with them in these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of Christ falsely tried, tortured and executed. Merciful God, we pray today for those held and tried falsely by corrupt regimes, knowing they have no hope of justice. We remember all prisoners, especially those enduring inhumane conditions and in fear of execution. Also, we remember those in internment camps being forcefully re-educated, stripped of their cultural identity and basic human rights and dignity. Be with all these, your children, Lord, in the darkness of their cells, in the loneliness of separation, and in their fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we pray for our world and ourselves, let us think of Christ's compassion, despite receiving none himself. Let us pray that we may learn from Christ's example 
of humility, love and service. Loving God, we pray for and give thanks to those who bring comfort, care and healing to all in need in this worldwide crisis. We think of and pray for those without work, who have lost livelihoods and unable to pay bills at this moment, that they may find the means, the advice, encouragement and support to provide for themselves and their families again. We pray too for all those still able to work in these precarious times and those who work in essential services in the community, especially in healthcare. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our National Health Service, for all working long shifts in the most difficult conditions to bring relief to those suffering from the virus and saving lives. Thank you for carers who enable those nearing the end of their lives to know they are loved and cared for with dignity and respect and enable many to remain living at home. We pray too for parents who work hard in all manner of ways to care for their children, wives and husbands who care for their loved ones in sickness and in health. We pray for children who care for their parents and friends who care for their neighbours. Help us all to recognise the needs of others and the need to support, and the need to support those who care quietly and without complaint. Surround them all with your love and give them courage and patience in their task. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, as we move into Holy Week, we commend ourselves and all people for whom Christ suffered to your mercy and protection. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us join with one voice, as one body in Christ, all those round the world this morning as we pray with the words Jesus Christ himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
blessing as we close our worship this Palm Sunday. May the same Spirit that shines through Jesus grant you that same courage, vision and passion for the world that all may know the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, today and always. Amen. Have a good Holy Week. May you be faithful and loving. And may the Lord meet you on the way to the cross and beyond. See you next week.